Benvenuti a Roma, and welcome to Vatican City. We have come all the way here to review the Panasonic Lumix S1. This is not the S1R, but there will be a 47 megapixel model. This is the 24.2 megapixel model, and we brought it all the way to beautiful Rome in order to take some photos with it and let you guys know what we think of this weighty beast. So we've just arrived in Rome and our B&B is not that far away from the Vatican so we thought we'd come over here and the first thing that I notice, uh, number one about Rome is there's way more space here to do what you want to do in stark contrast to Marrakech where it was, everything was on top of you all the time. Um, but the second thing that I notice is the EVF in this camera is phenomenal. It's by far the highest resolution EVF you can now get, I think, possibly, on the market. I might be telling fibs there, I'm not entirely sure. But what I do know is that it's contemporaries like the Sony a7 III, the Nikon Z6, the Z7, and the Canon EOS R, their EVFs, while fantastic, only go up to about 3.6 thousand, or what is it, million dots in resolution. This is a 5,700 dot EVF. It's crazy good. I just wanted to let you guys know what tools we have in our tool bag here while we're in Rome. Uh, I have the S1. This is the 24.2 megapixel model. This will retail for 2199 when it hits the market in March. I've also brought the standard 24 to 105. Is it a kit lens? I'm not entirely sure, but lens, it is an F4, as is the 70 to 200. This is also an F4. Uh, that is the second lens that we brought with us. It's also going to launch with a 50mm 1.4 prime. That's something that we don't have our hands on, but we will let you know what we think of these two lenses while we're here. Now, aside from the camera being 2199, you can expect the Lumix S24-105 to to start at a 1299 price. Not so standard price, but it's not a standard lens really, is it? It's a magnesium alloy built and it is just incredibly robust and the picture quality is immense. It's also got to be a bit larger to fit that brand new L mount on this camera. This one is going to hit the market at 1799 uh, and it's not, like I said, the f2.8. It is the f4, but I think we can expect to see the f2.8 sometime in 2019. I know that Sigma has somewhere in the region of 11 lenses coming out this year and because they are part of the Mount Alliance, the, uh, the alliance between Leica, Panasonic and Sigma announced last year uh, in order to develop this camera and the lenses that it's going to come with, I think some of those 11 lenses we're going to see in 2019 are going to be lenses for the new L mount. Now, what you can do if those three aren't going to satisfy your needs right at launch is you can use Leica SL lenses. They are a little pricey, but then these aren't the cheapest lenses on the market either. They will, however, fit the owl mount and the body and you'll get exceptional image quality out of them. So that's a positive if you're already locked into the Leica system. Good morning and welcome to the Vatican Museum. It is the second day of our Rome visit and our review of the Panasonic S1. Uh, as I said, we're inside the Vatican now and we're gonna have a look around. I believe that is the top of St. Peter's Basilica. We're gonna test this camera out. There's a couple of things in here I know I wanna take photos of. So I'm just gonna try and use the, the probably the widest uh, length that this 24 to 105 offers. 
Um, yeah, and we're just gonna form an opinion throughout the day. We've got a lot to do today. We're gonna move from basically this side of Rome and the Vatican Museum all the way over to the Colosseum, bit by bit, hopefully gonna visit the Pantheon on the way and some of the piazzas. So, let's get started. to use the uh, the tilting LCD on the back of the camera. Clear as it is, it's a, a beautiful screen, but it's uh, a bit fiddly, but it works, and it worked very well just there, so I'm grateful for it. So we've just experienced the Sistine Chapel firsthand. You're not supposed to take photos in the Sistine Chapel, but we might have snuck a couple in. Um, the great thing about this camera is it is a full frame camera, so you get a lot of detail, and the pixels are larger than the pixels would be on an APS-C or a four-thirds camera that has the same megapixel count. So they gather a little bit more information, a little bit more light, um, and just generally the quality is just a little bit sort of better. Now, one of the features of this camera, if that 20, is it 24.2 megapixels isn't enough for you, is it does something similar to what many mirrorless cameras do these days that we see coming out. I've taken to calling it pixel shift. I'm not sure whose nomenclature that is, but what it will do is the IS system, the inbuilt uh, image stabilization system in the camera, will do that thing where it shifts the sensor around ever so slightly, and it will give you a 96 megapixel image uh, rather than a 24.2 one. So for occasions like this, where you might be photographing inside the Sistine Chapel and you wanna catch every last little detail, that 96 megapixel sensor shift technology may come in handy. So we just paused outside of the Italian Supreme Court, which I believe is that magnificent building there. Um, I just wanted to give the high res mode sort of a shot and I figure this is a really good place to do that because there's a lot of detail uh, in this image. So uh, we've sort of posted up on the bridge. All you've got to do is go into the menu system, uh, find high res mode underneath the camera settings, start high res mode, and then when you want to exit high res mode, you just hit the Q button. Now, judging by the, I'm not, I wasn't sure how many frames it takes at first, but judging by the, the number of shutter actuations I can hear, I think it's somewhere in the region of eight, and there is a two second, you can set a two second shutter delay so that after you hit the shutter button, one, two, so that you're not getting the vibration of the immediate actuation when you press the shutter and do that full sort of release. Um, but I think it gives you, yeah, so you get a, a two second shutter delay, then it takes eight frames, and it takes, I don't know, maybe all of five seconds to sort of write that to the card, process the image, uh, and then you're good for your next high res uh, sort of shot. So I've been stood here on this bridge in front of the Supreme Court mucking about with the camera, trying to put this S1 and the 70 to 200 on my 3K Joby, and it was not working, and it was really winding me up. But the time that we spent here uh, actually paid off. We had a, uh, a solitary man row underneath the bridge while we were stood here, and I thought it was a good opportunity to try the 6K photo mode on this camera. So when you switch it over to 6K photo mode, you can actually shoot a 6K burst for up to 10 minutes, and that burst, the frame rate, is uh, 60 frames a second. So you could just keep shooting at 60 frames a second for 10 minutes in 6K. I'm not quite sure what the application is for 6K photo mode. We did discuss with some colleagues before we came out here that maybe if you were at a, uh, or you know, if you had a photo shoot or something like that and you had a model, you could just tell it to get in front of the camera and just go pose for 10 minutes. I think you've, everybody's seen like those videos of models sort of like doing this, you know. Um, so maybe that's, maybe that's what it's good for, I don't know. So we're making our way into Rome city center now, at least what I assume is the city center, and we're actually starting to get a little bit of rain. We're in uh, Piazza Navona on our way to the Pantheon. Um, now, I don't have to worry about the rain with this camera because it is weather sealed, so I'm assuming the lenses are as well, but I guess we'll find out. But I'm not too concerned. It's a very, very robust camera, 
So just a note, weather sealing on this camera. We've got it. I don't think EOS R has that. So that about wraps it up for our second day in Rome. We didn't actually get into the Colosseum because we weren't aware that they were going to close the, uh, the Colosseum at 3.30 today. We're going to try and get in there tomorrow for, I don't know, maybe 9.30, something like that, and get some shots in the morning. Later on this evening, or perhaps tomorrow morning, I'm going to give you guys sort of a debrief on what I found it like shooting with the S1 around Rome. It's certainly not the, uh, it's, I mean, it's one of the larger cameras I've used to do sort of street photography and, and, and tourist photography, that 24 to 105 has been immensely useful, but it's also very heavy. Um, but yeah, this is a, a great way to sort of uh, wrap up the day. We took some longer exposure shots here, and I think I got some, uh, some beautiful imagery to show you guys. Well, we finally made it inside the Colosseum. We didn't think we were gonna get in for a second because the sign definitely says backpacks and bags prohibited. So we would have shown up two days in a row and been disappointed twice. And I'm pretty sure we both would have been pretty peed off. But we got in even though security is tight. But here we are, we are going to wrap this thing up today at the Coliseum and then we will debrief you and I will give you my fully formed opinion on the S1. I'm also gonna try and mention some of the features that I haven't mentioned over the past couple of days. I mean, we've basically been touring Rome and, and just trying to get to grips with the camera and it's it's not, it's very difficult for me to, to, to walk around, to get to know the camera, to shoot with the camera and regurgitate the, 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 spec, the specs. Of, of the thing to you while I'm you know trying to take some good photos so uh, yeah we're gonna do all of that while we uh, while we walk around here and then probably a little bit outside So one of the things I haven't spoken about with the Panasonic Lumix S1 is that this is the content creator's model. So if you want to shoot video but you also want to shoot high quality photographs, this is going to be the one you're going to go to. It is the Z6 A7 III sort of equivalent. The S1R on the other hand with that 47 megapixel sensor is your predominantly photography, uh, high resolution, big image sort of camera. Now this camera features 4K 60p, which is something I don't think we've seen yet in a full frame sensor, and there is no pixel binning with that. Now you can do, I think it puts out 14-bit 4K footage, but you'll also be able to record 422 10-bit internally, but I believe that that is a firmware upgrade and an optional extra, which means that you may have to pay for that. Something else you'll have as an option when you purchase this, well, it's not even an option, it's just a complimentary extra, is Panasonic is going to be throw in a year of their free pro service. I believe it's 365 days, I can't be sure, but that will be something that you will receive free of charge. Now, the pro service is something where if you need a repair or if you just need to get in touch with Panasonic in terms of customer service wise, uh, something to do with the warranty, whatever it is, they will prioritize you over other customers which is a great added option because nobody wants to get a brand new camera and be super excited, have something go wrong, and then not be able to reach the company. So we are now preparing to head back to the UK. 
Uh, a couple things I just wanted to make note of before we left. The camera does have two SD card slots, uh, an SD and an XQD, and by all accounts you'll be able to upgrade that slot to a CFast slot if need be. I don't really know which one of those formats is going to win out in the end. That might be more relevant for the S1R than it is for the S1. I think content creators are more than happy to keep using their SD cards, smash them in their laptop on the go. Um, another thing, I like the layout of the Panasonic S1. Uh, I like the fact that I have manual access to single, continuous, uh, and uh, manual focus. On the uh, There's a little switch on the back of the camera. I also like the physical dial on top that allows me to switch what frame rate I'm using. Um, it feels really good. It has the joystick. The LCD is a little bit meh, neither here nor there, but it's quality and it is a professional grade camera. I don't think there is yet a really very robust LCD screen that can kind of flip and twist. The very angle thing always seems a little finicky to me and maybe a little fragile as well. So I can understand this one feels a lot stronger. Um, something else I wanted to mention is this camera does something called, it has an HLG photo mode and it creates these files called HSP files. Now these are something that is probably not going to be really relevant to the majority of users and, and mostly anybody at this point right now because these files only work with Panasonic's latest generation of television that we've seen released, I think it's CES 2019. Uh, and what they are is they create a, 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 an amazing, but a, an amazing 8K uh, resolution sort of image. Same way you've got 4K, 6K. They create an 8K image, an HSP file, but they're only viewable on these televisions. So that's really neither here nor there. Um, I think that's about it really. Really enjoyed using the camera. Battery life was okay. It's a 3000 something ma battery. I found yesterday that I pretty much got through it by the end of the day, I think maybe between the, like around 400 shots is what you can get. If you play with the battery saver mode on the back, it allows you to, to sort of change your settings and, and change the behavior of the camera to try and save as much battery power as possible. Apparently you can squeeze out over a thousand shots. Um, I don't really know. I think that's just shooting through the EVF, uh, uh, ignoring the live viewfinder on the back. So something to consider is probably definitely grab a second battery if you're going to pick this guy up. Um, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty big unit and I think it uses a lot of power, probably a lot of power to power that amazing EVF. If there's one reason that I would consider this camera over all other full frame mirrorless cameras, it is that electronic viewfinder. I think the gold standard in viewfinders is basically being able to see what you're going to shoot before you hit the, uh, before you hit the trigger button. and. I mean, this, this is as close as I think as it gets to showing you what you're creating as you create it. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive, actually. So it's well worth taking a peek through that before you decide on anything else. Welcome back to our Gloucestershire office. I wanted to give you guys a few more of my thoughts on the Panasonic S1. I feel like we always get better perspective and more clarity once we've given ourselves a little bit of time to sort of develop our thoughts and, and put a little distance between ourselves and a particular event. Firstly, I want to say that all the images that you've seen in this video have been JPEGs straight out of the camera. On one hand, that's a bit disappointing for me because I was really looking forward to going to town on some of these images in Lightroom. On the other hand, it's a faithful representation of what you can expect when you pick up this camera and you shoot with it. I don't know if it could get any more honest than that, really. So Ben's put all the settings on all of those images so you can see exactly what the results are that, that you would find uh, when you were to shoot in those locations with those same settings. The reason all the images you've seen in this video are JPEGs is because Lightroom doesn't have raw support for uh, this camera model yet, and it's usually that way with most new camera releases. Support for new raw files and new cameras usually doesn't come out on, on camera raw in Adobe for you know a couple of weeks or a couple of months afterwards. Also, unfortunately, the high-res image that we shot, I wasn't aware, but at the time, it, uh, it wrote to the card and it, it wrote as a raw file, so we're unable to show you a 100% crop of that image. Let's get down to brass tacks here. I really enjoyed shooting with this camera. I enjoyed shooting with the G9 last year. I'm unsure if you guys have seen that video that we did in like November or something. Uh, the camera reminds me a lot of that camera. I like how Panasonic build their cameras. Um, the ergonomics of it are great. There's a lot of physical dials on there, which I appreciate that access key functions like the switching of autofocus modes and the frame rate, which I'm using. I appreciate having physical buttons for features like that because I don't necessarily like having to access, stop what I'm doing, access a menu system, look through the menu system, change my settings, then pull the camera back up to my face in order to have to change any of those things. 
it's so much quicker if you can just access that on the camera body. Um, it's a big camera. It did get heavy throughout the course of the day, but I can cope with that. I'm a larger person anyway, so I, you know, it means that having a, I like having a full size camera because it gives me more to hold on to, and that deep battery, you know, the deep grip on this camera was uh, was really appreciated. I don't think I really used a, a strap while we were out in Rome, but I at no point felt like I needed one. Um, I just carried the camera with me everywhere, and uh, it, it felt perfectly fine. Plus, straps seem to they get in the way, anyways. The weight thing is maybe something for you know for somebody to consider if if they're worried about having a, a heavy camera on them all day. For me, I'm perfectly happy to carry a full frame camera around with me, a proper sized camera, all day because I like the results that it gives me. So I'm, I'm willing to I'm willing to deal with an additional kilo of of weight or whatever. It's probably not even that much. A camera of this size isn't really something that you're going to want to use for street photography because it's not very discreet and human subjects are going to clock onto that pretty quick. However, if you want a camera for your travels that is going to resolve images in high detail with robust dynamic range and great color depth, then you're probably looking for something like the Panasonic S1. I'm also acutely aware at the end of the video that I didn't really delve into the autofocus of this camera. Now, specs wise, Super boring. It does, you know, 225 cross type AF points and it assesses autofocus at something like 480 frames a second. You get six frames continuous uh, and you also get nine frames if you're using single autofocus and the buffer is something like 90 images in RAW. All of that is fabulous. None of it really occurred to me to, uh, to speak about when we were in Rome because. Uh, I didn't really need to, to do any sort of demanding autofocus tests while I was out there. Needless to say, I used autofocus a lot while I was there, uh, most of the time, and it worked very well. I was very pleased with the results when we got back here into the office and I finally went through the images with a fine tooth comb. And if I ever found the AF system to be wanting or that I needed to, to sort of manually adjust my focus, the focus peaking on the camera worked really well. Um, and you know, from what I could see through the EVF, Again, you get such great detail in this EVF um, that when you're looking through it and you're adjusting focus, it, you just feel more confident that what you have in focus in the electronic viewfinder is, is what really is in focus. You'll notice in the video we switched from filming with the A7S II to the Panasonic S1 while we were in the Colosseum. Uh, when we did that, Ben just took the Rode mic from the A7S II with the same settings put it on top of the S1 and adjusted the levels to be pretty much exactly the same as what it is on the, on the A7, on the Sony. Um, so I just wanted you to have that for your uh, comparison making information process. Uh, I just, I think it's important for you to, to have that info. Um, I thought the S1 held up relatively well considering that the A7S II that we usually film our videos on produces some of the best video footage outside of cinema grade cameras. So for a, a consumer, sort of uh, mirrorless, you know, DSLR, whatever it is, it's, it's pretty hard to beat the A7S II, so keep that in mind when you're making your comparison. Like with any camera, you'll need to get to know your new tool so that you can manipulate it to get the desired results. Uh, the Panasonic S1 provides you with all the tools and all the features that you'll need to uh, change your settings to, you know, to achieve whatever it is that you're looking to achieve, maybe on this camera more than some other cameras. My verdict, I loved it and I would be happy to own one. I experienced a similar joy when shooting with the G9 and I think a big part of that joy is realizing after the fact that, oh wow, all these photos turned out as good as I imagined when I looked at them on the back of the camera. Um, I think that's an important thing for me, for my purposes. I probably didn't delve into the depths of this camera as much as a, a regular professional photographer would have done, but that is not my usual vocation. Um, I'm here just to sort of deliver information and give you guys my opinion as a, a content creator and sort of an amateur uh, photographer. For me, if I pick it up, if I point it, I shoot it, and I'm happy with the results that come out the other side, uh, then that, that for me makes a, makes a, a good shooting experience and a, and a, and a happy, you know, happy camera user. For all the demanding professional content creators out there, I think this camera is a must consider camera if it's in your budget, even if it's just to have a look at that 5.7K EVF, which is outstanding. Um, if you are in the market, or if you just wanna get to know the camera, then we will have it actually at our Dursley location on February 9th. Uh, I think it's a Saturday, so come on down, view the camera, say hello, um, and yeah.
Thanks for joining us for another Clifton Cameras review and we will see you for the next one. Thank you.